I, I started on in this industry actually by accident. I was actually a music student and they canceled the music program at the school I was at. And then I applied at Nate and I took the three year program with the idea of I was gonna go into the drafting program. The thing that happened to me on the first day is there was an instructor, Mr. Bosch, a Dutch carpenter. He was absolutely great, such a humble guy. And he had done a lot of construction work and he just impressed me. And I knew I was gonna go down that right after meeting him. Paul and I go back so many years, it'd be difficult. I would say probably 25 or 30 years ago. I think anybody that's worked with them, sub trades or other contractors, see him as somebody who wants the project to work. He's not an egocentric person. He's a team player and wants everybody to succeed. Though I was very fortunate. There was two of us were hired right off the bat out of need. We were the first two to be hired. Neither one of us knew what we were doing, but we knew we needed the job, so we took it. And so I was a junior draftsman just drafting huge, massive concrete areas. No idea what it meant, just knew I was just drawing, which became an issue for me because I wanted to understand why I was doing that, which I was not getting at that project. So RJC approached me after a couple of years that I was doing all these power generation stations. And then the fellow's name was Gino Ferry. And I thought, geez, this gentleman's got kind of an new style, so I went to work for him. The other thing that impressed me about RJC is the knowledge they gave us. And I learned so much in uh, four or five years there that I'm very grateful for. I was the last person that got let go by RJC uh, when the downturn came. So I went back to the university to take some more computer courses related to CAD drawings at the time. And after I'd gone through that, I was approached by a firm to work on Canada Place to put all the drawings together on there using CAD. After the CAD program was finished, the construction started, I moved on to the site to look after the quality control for the structural engineering firm. So the area manager for the firm, Ellis Don, Mr. Fred Ray says, well, Paul, I'll tell you what we're going to do is I'm going to offer you a job. At that point, we're looking for young people. Imagine calling Paul Forbes young. We hired him. Uh as a coordinator, and then he moved uh, quickly up the ranks, very smart guy, so he moved quickly up the ranks and uh, took on senior roles in Edmonton. Then he moved on uh, to the Calgary Airport, which was a, a large project and he was fully in charge. Of the airport authority just loved him. That was a very challenging project. That within itself, that program had 12, 10 to 12 buildings that we had to build inside that program. So the challenge was to organize the 12 to see how they were going to be built in the sequence. And that was a lot of fun to do that first, and then we built each of the buildings. He's been involved in hospitals, schools, and all of those projects, he also puts his heart into them. He just doesn't go there to get the job done. He takes a personal interest in the project and all the trades that get involved. From there, he moved back now I'm leaving out some small projects, but then he moved back to do the Mazankowski. Mazankowski was going to be the state-of-the-art heart trans facility in North America. And my role as a construction manager was to work with the University of Alberta and all the consultants and put a program together that built the Mazankowski. It was in the midst of the boom of the Alberta economy. There were shortages of subtrades, the drawings were late in coming out, and he had to balance the engineering along with the construction, along with these other complex pieces, his ability to deal with each of these, these issues individually and respectfully allowed that project to get built in a way I think otherwise would have been through a lot more difficulty. Paul had been involved with Nate uh, long before I had even started at Nate, but I would say in my time with Paul, his impact was really um, pushing industry to support our program and to support really all areas of Nate. Terry Falcher was the head guy for Nate for the construction technology. And then he asked me to come on the advisory board so we could take a look at their program. And I enjoyed working with staff at Nate for 10 years. Paul always gave the young people a great shot, but another example would be the way he brought women into the industry. He did it before others, he brought them in 
not only into the office, but into the field. He was ahead of the curve with respect to bringing women into our industry. That was Paul. He, he was forward thinking. They brought a lot to the table and he wasn't going to let that resource be missed. Paul has committed so much of his professional life to purposes that benefit everybody that's involved in the industry. He's doing what he can to make our industry better. He's doing what he can to develop the people in our industry. He's doing what he can to make our systems better. When he's, when he's working with Nate, when he's working with SAIT, when he's working with the ECA, it's all with respect to making our industry better. And he's a very good example for young men and women who are now entering the industry. He's really strived and succeeded to build relationships, not just from him on a personal level, but with other areas of industry, like almost a industry education uh, matchmaker kind of thing, yeah. Paul's ability, which comes back to his mannerisms, his treatment of people, allows him to find his way on all projects because he's very interested in everybody succeeding, not just about his own ego. That is his greatest strength.